All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, according to a publication on Ascend, right, career transitions are like onions. They are complex and there is usually a lot more to them than we see on the surface. Whether you are pursuing a passion or a side hustle, confused about quitting your job for a new one, or just looking for a change, know that it's not a straightforward decision. It requires careful planning and thinking through um, the why, the what, and the when. Now, the world is changing and so are we. So how do we start to career transition? for the future, right? The future of the jobs are not your regular, you are, you are a TikToker, I see career now. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at the Show Africa on the hashtag Show. So I'm gonna bring in Vumi in a minute, right? I just wanna hear your quick thoughts, Uti and Noma. Um, have you had any, at any point in time, thought about um, transitioning a career and what did you do? How did you go about that? Not necessarily transitioning careers. Um, I've always been in the customer space. Um, so that is, um, has always been the foundation. What I am is a jack of many trades. So I have sold cars, I have sold spare parts, I have, um, well, there's been a DJ. <laughs> Um, MC, MC, um, anything that involves talking. So yeah, so I've done many, many things. Uh, I've been a caterer. I've baked. I've been a wedding planner or event planner. So I think every I've been a photographer. Uh -uh. So everything that's trending today <laughs> at been. some point. <laughs> Um, so I'm very curious. So when I get into something, I really, really get into it. I did make up for about five minutes and I just I was like, this is a lot of work. <laughs> Trying to fight with eyebrows just was not for me. Um, but I usually want to learn things. And you're currently a coder. So, well, yes, I'm learning coding now because of the little man. So there's that too. Um, a lot of these things, like I said, I never do regrets, right? But when I see the money, amount of money people are making, I just think to myself, my God. What if I just What stayed? if I just... <laughs> I mean, I just talked about the YouTube thing, right? Because I like to try everything and I like to try to learn it at least to a decent amount of, of time. So I see photographers today who, when they started out, they would come to me and say, hey, show me how to use this camera. And today I'm seeing them shooting weddings with confidence and I'm thinking, wow, if only. The times have really changed. But that's the thing, right? So I, I think that everybody's got their gifting and their calling. Um, and I know that I can do a lot of things, but mm. transitioning is an interesting thing. I have a lot of questions, questions for our guests awesome. because um, in the last three weeks, I've met two ladies. One quit her job in a law firm to open her restaurant. Another quit her job in financial services, two very good jobs. Um, and she now owns her own salon. And these were all based on their hobbies and things that they love to do. So in fact, the lady that owned the salon, she's learning trichology, even though the salon is now open, she's learning trichology. So the fact is they followed their gift or their mm. hobbies or their passions, whatever you want to call it. And I would like to understand how people take the leap because- Hallelujah. You know? The leap of faith. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly. Right. Well, I have transitioned in a way from, how, where do I start from? estate management to finding myself as a missionary to moving on to working with uh, NGOs and then being a makeup artist to grooming, speaking, training people. So it, it's really, but the interesting thing is that these are areas that I have come to love and I have passion. I also have questions for. Okay. So let me bring in our guest. Yes. Vumi. Insuli. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sweeney, Sweeney, <laughs> uh, you have to, it. no, but Vumi needs to take me to South Africa for one month. Uh, I'll be all right. <laughs> Vumi Sweeney is the chief executive officer of um, Hershed Consulting, a, co um, a coaching and consulting firm specializing in commerce acceleration, career coaching, women empowerment, facilitation, and training on, on the African continent with presence in Nigeria, South Africa, Botswana, Rwanda, and affiliates in Namibia, Ghana, and Uganda. She has coached in multinationals such as Google, APSA, Investor, Private Bank, Silica, FNB, Vodacom, and many more. And she's joined us live from South Africa in Nigeria. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, <laughs> I must get it. 
but thank you so much. Actually, my type ad, she's a very amiable person, oh, such a <laughs> fantastic personality. I think you'll be the first South African that I am in close proximity with. So most times when I have South African guests, they are always on Zoom. So, I mean, it's a, it's a pleasure. Cause I hear you guys are bubbly, but I've seen a bubbly South African. In person. In person. <laughs> But thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I mean, so we're, we're discussing career transitioning, right? And the reason we added that cash for the future is that work as we know it, life as we know it, is really... And, and the change is so drastic that... I mean, look at what Uti said. Years back, some things were not even... You couldn't even mention them that these were careers that you would think about. But today, these are the frontline careers that are just, you know... Everybody, it's the center of attention and attraction for most people that everybody wants to jump into those careers, right? So in terms of positioning, right, and we're talking transitioning, you know, how do we even start? Where do we start to look at if we say we want to transition our career and we want to position ourselves for the future relevance, right? Where do we start from? So for me, the first point of, of departure is where do you want to be? Mm. So a lot of us think, oh, I want to be CEO. <laughs> oh, no, I want to be chief operations officer. We often are looking at titles as opposed to uh, experiences. Mm. So I always say to my clients, okay, this is where you are. This is where you're wanting to be. What is the experience you want? Because if you know the experience you want, it doesn't matter what happens in the future. The titles could change. The platforms could change. But you would have that experience. I'll use an example. For me, I love writing. Oh, I think I want to write for a newspaper. I love communicating with people. Mm. And then all of a sudden, it's actually, no, it's not just writing. I enjoy storytelling. I want to do it in person. So now the platform could be TikTok. Ten years ago, it would have been YouTube. Mm. So whatever it is that you're wanting to experience determines where it is that you're wanting to be. When you know that, then you say, okay, these are the skills I'm going to need to be successful in that particular arena. Then you start going about how, navigating that transition. So it starts with what you even love to, to do. do. Yes. Absolutely. What's it? Mm. <laughs> what you love to do. Ah, problem, <laughs> <didn't you? laughs> So that, that's like, I'm like, which one? <laughs> um, okay, so that's a good foundation. And the examples that I gave spoke to people who want to transition um, or who have transitioned into entrepreneurship. But even within, um, so I take myself as an example. I've always been in, in the customer space. Um, but if I want to, tra to transition, now you've just talked about acquiring skills, but what about the skills that I currently have? Because one of the concerns is, I'm in a current um, industry where I'm a thought leader. If I move to another industry, I'm the equivalent the of a newbie. <laughs> but how do I transition at that same level? So what is transferable in terms of skills what should people be looking at beyond yes going to acquire some technical skills of course but what do i bring to the table today to me to make me even feel like transitioning isn't going to be like another 10 years of school mm, that's a great question so it's actually doing a tally of those skills right so this is where i'm wanting to be here's what i have currently this is what i'm brilliant at what is the gap? Okay, I'll go to school for that. And understanding what you're great at repurposes. So I have a, a great client of mine. She was a medical doctor. And she was like, Vumi, makeup is my passion. That's actually what I want to do. But you've got this medical training. So what, how do we close that gap? Then it's a case of, well, you definitely know facial structures, probably more than any makeup artist mm. ever will. The second thing you also have is an existing client base. They know you, they trust you. Mm. So let's leverage that. And how about we start playing in the aesthetic space so you're not losing that medical training. All of a sudden, she's got a one-stop shop where she does your Botox, fills you up, and then also does your lashes. Wow. So you don't, I don't think, uh, often when we think of transition, we think it's mutually exclusive. Mm. Mm. We think we've got to release the past, and that's not how it works. <laughs> you should leverage. <laughs> like your leverage. Expert, we must see the past. Yes. You must <laughs> leverage on the expertise mm. and transfer it into... Were you so I always like to use the analogy of my mother will be pleased with this when she when I had when I still did ballet. You know, in ballet, you pirouette. Mm. A lot of us are thinking, I need to pivot, I need to pivot. You need to pirouette where you are, leap Go off around. it, and use it as a bouncing board to where it is that you're wanting to be. Yeah. And also remember, if you're a thought leader in a particular area, it means it's easy for you to access thought leaders in other areas. Mm. Because you're an expert in what you do. Leverage those relationships to open that door. So you're not mm. starting all of a sudden at the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. you, there's a little bit of, of experience there, a little bit more of respect there, that it's easier then to transition. Mm. Mm. 
see. So very, very solid. Plenty to learn. <laughs> plenty to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if, if I was going to continue from where would you stop? What are the things now? I mean, with what you said, that was a beautiful one. What do you now pay attention to? Okay, so you are a uh, thought leader in an area and then you're transiting. What are the things that you need to pay attention to that probably the people that you're trying to connect with need in order for you to be successful in that transition? So I think it's twofold there. The first is internal. Often that imposter syndrome comes in, right? Mm. I have no experience in this. I haven't mastered this. They're going to know I'm actually a fraud because I've never done this. Mm. And you feel that imposter syndrome because you are a novice. You've never done it before. So get comfortable in not knowing. But then saying, where are those gaps? What can I learn? Then the second thing you have to look at is the outward, right? So in having those conversations with thought leaders and realizing, oh, okay, I don't know what I don't know. But it also means I will look at it from a very fresh perspective. Mm. And often we find this, this is a massive trend happening, you know, specifically in Southern Africa. And I think we're seeing it also start to happen across the world, where people and organizations are going for uh, disciplines that never used to be part of them. Banks are hiring engineers because their frame of reference and how they approach a problem is fundamentally mm. different. Yeah. So you not knowing means you can ask the kind of questions that completely change the status quo. Hmm. A lot of the times we're doing things because, oh, we've always done it this way. Right. And when you have a novice coming and say, why are we doing that? Hmm. It's like, why are we doing that? Hmm. And it allows us to actually open up the industry into something new and fresh that we potentially have never thought about. We use the example of um, Apple. They were a tech company that the music industry never saw coming. Hmm. So don't underplay your noviceness because it potentially could disrupt the industry you're wanting to go into. Hmm. I love what you just said because... So my own transitioning is not at top level. Um, just this year, I decided, you know what, I wanted to add a new skill. I wanted to just start another profession completely away from media. Mm -hmm. So I went into product management, right? Mm -hmm. I did a training. I now got a company that was willing to take me on as an intern. I'm, and I can bet you with what you just said, most times when I'm in meetings, right, because I do not, like I tell them I do not know anything. <laughs> You know, like I know nothing about what it is that they're doing is a distribution. I've not done anything around that kind of work before. It allows me that freedom, that naivety to be able to ask the questions that they were very blind to. Mm -hmm. So now we are creating systems that is a lot more empathetic towards the customer's journey because there's somebody that is seeing things in a completely different perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when, when you want to transition, I am not transitioning to like a superior role and I'm willing to go back to the is that a good thing because some people also look at it that no i've done 14 years like what uti had mentioned earlier i think she's just mentioned it in passing i've done 14 years i've done 20 years as a customer experience expert I'll right? begin all but over again. now let us say that the future work is in the tech space and i really do not have any expertise mm. and i want to go into that tech space you know to build something from there is it a wise move to then go back to start from scratch. Mm. I think you, in, by virtue of the fact that you're leaving what you've done before, there's an mm. element that's always going to be starting from scratch. Mm. And even if you're looking at your 14 years and you're thinking, oh, that's fine, in two years' time, you'll be starting from scratch in how you do that. Mm. Right? You're constantly adapting it for what's happening on ground. So for me, I think you need to get comfortable knowing that the future is always changing. Mm. Your knowledge, historically, I think nothing is ever wasted. Mm. It can always be reapplied reused, and adapted and absolutely. reused and repurposed for where it is that you're going. Mm. But it, I think where people get frustrated is that that does not always equate to the money. Because mm. that's an essence we're talking about. Yeah. Right? yeah, you know what, let's take a break. <laughs> <laughs> money matter, it requires time. <laughs> Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing career transitioning, and we have with us Wumi, career transitioning for the future. Um, I mean, so before we went on a break, you talked about money. <laughs> I can't mention my salary outside. <laughs> I can't mention how much they are paying me, but um, so how do you strike that balance, right? I, and I hear you correctly. You're right to say that... Um, as long as you have that experience, it's never wasted, right? Even though it seems like you're starting from scratch, mm. that experience will play a huge role in how you would leap 
you know, very quickly in the new career that you're in. And I think I'm experiencing it because it just, it's just happening very quickly for me based on the kind of experience I've had in other industries, right? So, so I was going to say that how do we then strike that balance, right? If we say, yes, we're doing the transition and all of that and the monetary part, you know, is a big deal. So mm -hmm. how do we balance that out? So I often say to my clients, often we think with career transitions, it's either or. Mm. And I like and. Mm. Okay. So I'll use myself as an example. When I was transitioning from my cushy executive role in telecommunications and running Africa, it's fantastic. But I'm really passionate about this career coaching thing. Career coaching is not going to give me a driver. It's not going to let me travel the whole world. It's not there yet. So what I did is I slowly built it side by side. The art of the side hustle mm. until I established enough credibility here that at least it was now matching mm. then I moved across so if it's possible and this is very very fortunate now is obviously we, the geography is no longer an issue so if you're saying I am in Nigeria and I am and I'm currently working in the tech space but my passion really is in the marketing space mm. a little bit less sleep and you could be doing that in Australia mm. and giving yourself that exposure and slowly gaining that credibility where you've got extra revenue, which is always great, and then slowly start merging the two. So often I also ask people, where you are now and where you're wanting to be, is there an and? Mm. You work in tech, you are interested in marketing, digital marketing perhaps? Mm. So all of some people are like, oh, I never thought I could do both. Mm. And often then if you do both for a while, it allows you to come with that credibility, not drop the salary, and then as you start becoming an expert, you can all of a sudden, the, the, then you can slowly walk away or moonwalk from yes. what you're used to. And attract the same, uh, um, the same salary. salary yeah. Yes. So, so everything we've talked about so far speaks to I've made the decision to transition. Mm. But uh, very many people today are working in jobs they don't love. Mm. Um, what are there or are there any, I don't know if it's sign, signs or things we should be looking out for or... Where, how should we start to think? Because I don't think a lot of people think that transitioning is possible. Mm -hmm. How can that start to become something that's more accessible to people? Because, I mean, tech today is booming. And people are like, like you said, I want to be a product manager. Right? That's one of the careers and that is almost future proof at the moment. But how do we start to, how do people start to connect with the possibilities of transitioning? So it's a very valid fact. So let's be honest here. We live in Africa. Our economies, yes, 16 of the 26 economies are fastest growing are here, but we have real problems. And often we are employed from a survivalist uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Some of us are even g selling hair, doing whatever to survive. It's got very little to do with passion, but a lot to do with, uh, with, with hunger pangs. Okay? So for me, I always advise my clients to take a look at uh, you know, the Japanese philosophy of the Ikigai, mm -hmm. where it's literally four quadr quadrants. It's what you love, what you are good at, what you get paid for, and what the world needs. Mm. So what do you love? Make a list of all of it, okay. okay? What are you good at? What do you have that natural affinity for? Make a list of all of it. What do you get paid to do? What is the problem you're solving currently? Make a list of that. And if you had a, a check that said you could solve any problem, where, where, what would it be for you? When, once you put into those four quadrants, you say, okay, I get paid for this. This is what I'm naturally good at. Okay, so it's probably more of a professional piece. So what I love, how can I slot that in? What problem do I want to solve? How can I slot this in? And then I did something very interesting. I went to my existing organization. I said, mm -hmm. listen, I really, really like teaching. I'm passionate about it at the time, a bank. And they said, oh, we've actually got a volunteer program. Mm. So if you want to teach, you can teach on Saturdays and we will pay that charity the salary we pay you per hour. So all of a sudden on Saturday, I'm living for Saturdays because I get to teach accounting, which I hate, but I'm <laughs> teaching, right? And I do that for three hours. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, I've really been enjoying this. Then I'm tutoring. I'm like, wait, it's actually not teaching. It's coaching that I love. Mm -hmm. And I was able to see that because now I'm like, I've, I'm getting exposure to discovering without losing my salary. Mm -hmm. So just by looking at those four quadrants, it starts to nudge you in the right direction. And if your work is awful, make sure that there's an expression that you love within your week. How can you start on a Saturday or Sunday where you can express yourself in something that you love? It'll give you some side hustle ideas, and then you can start making that transition. Hmm. Hmm. How easy can those transitions be? Because the um, areas are different, you know, hmm. countries are different. I mean, in Nigeria here, things are not the way they are in South Africa. Hmm. So for people, and then globally, some people want to transit to
to other climbs and um, some people want to come down this way. So how easy can it be for one to transit from one career to the other, from one location to the other? And um, what do they need to look out for? Mm. So no, it's not easy at all. So mm. I remember when I told my family, I'm going to go build a business in Nigeria. Everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Started literally at home. All I did was watch Nollywood. I would only listen to a Nigerian music. I would only order Nigerian food. I lived in Nigeria in my mind long before I arrived here. Hmm. Wow. So by the time I got you the nuances, the jokes, I, I knew what Wala was. <laughs> There's such things I knew because I'd immersed myself in the culture. Hmm. When you immerse yourself in the culture of a people, you get to understand their psychology oh, right. and their way of life right. and their challenges. Right. Right. So you're not coming from, oh, what, good what is Nepal? <laughs> you're not coming from that perspective. <laughs> <laughs> if coaching doesn't pan out, <laughs> Hollywood is way too much. I'm telling you, you would do fantastically well. No, but it's, it's not even that. Whether coaching is even working, she's just skits. on it. It's skits. It's skits. I think she's my first. Skits. She's my first. Um, my first. Uh, what's it called? Ticket to winning that YouTube money. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so, so, so you immerse yourself and that allows you to then be able to transition. Mm. And it really shifts how you show up. Because remember, my, my perspective of South African in Nigeria, it gives people a fish. I've never thought about it that way. Mm. It's a different frame of reference, but I'm still being able to be locally relevant. Mm. Absolutely. So you want to you wanna be able to do both. Mm. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. We've just opened up our offices in Kenya. I did the exact same thing. I was like, okay, eating chapati, listening to Saudi soul, understanding how Kenyans approach. Mm. And often we think this, right? You go to a country once and you're like, you see Johannesburg or you see Nairobi, you see Lagos, like Cape mm. Town. You're like, oh, I know, please, I know Nigeria. Have you been to other states? Mm. True, Do you know true. how other people approach things? Have you been to Mushin? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it really, for me, it helps you there. Mm. But then don't throw out what you know. Mm. Because right. that's what's often missing in the market you're going so, to. So I, I, I want to just piggyback again to Noma's question. I'm sure since you are Nigerian, <laughs> we'll soon give you a Nigerian name. Oh, it's ah, for me, for me, for me, for me, for me, for me, you know, uh, since you would understand the concept of Jakpa, mm. everybody wants to leave the country mm. and everybody feels like the, the pasture Solution is greener is at the yeah. other side. Um, they want to tra transition careers and they're thinking, right? Is there, is, is there a major red flag to look out for as Nigerians? Because Nigerians right now, there are some you will not tell them anything. They just believe that until I leave this country, my career is not going to... Um, it's gonna, it's not Things gonna are be not better. going to improve. Things will not improve and all of that. You know, so when you see those kind of people, what counsel would you give to the people that want to transition, but they're not even thinking within Nigeria, I want to transition into a different career and I want to go abroad to do that. How would you, would, would it be the same um, structure of approach that you would, you, you would tell for them? Mm. So I, I would say if you're thinking about leaving the country, the very first thing you need to think about is one way do you want to go and why do you want to leave? Mm -hmm. I know Nigerians are like, is it not obvious? <laughs> um, so a lot of people be like, oh, but it's the power issue. We've got power issues in South Africa as well. Mm -hmm. I think there, there wasn't power for almost, almost 24 hours yesterday for my, with my mom, right? So don't think everything's as good as it seems. So my first thing is reach out to people on LinkedIn, have the conversation with people who are living there. Mm. The second thing is expose yourself to that market whilst in Nigeria. Okay. What do I mean? Look at remote working. Um, you know, a lot of my staff here was like, I just want to leave. And I was like, that's interesting. I need people who are in Nigeria, but I can, I'm happy to pay you what I pay my staff in rands. All of a sudden they're like, hmm, okay. You still get exposed to the market, you come into the country, etc. So I'd say look at both sides of the coin. Mm. And also remember something, when you pack up and you leave, you're not going to be treated the way you get treated at home. Right. I always make the joke that I didn't know I was African until I got to America. I, mm -hmm. I wasn't aware. You know, obviously everyone around me is African. You get there and they're like, you're African. I was like, so <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, you say that as if it's an insult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So there are also some, some opportunity costs that you're going to leave. Absolutely. Mm. And also think about this, and I know I just never like it when I say this, but you live in the biggest economy on the continent where it is literally the last frontier for opportunities for growth. Hmm. Everyone is trying to come in. It's interesting you're trying to go out. 
Hmm. So how can you make sure that you can generate the same kind of lifestyle? Because it's always a money issue. Hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're able to earn in dollars and spend in naira's, what a pleasure. Hallelujah, mm. baby. Why not say <laughs> yeah? <laughs> you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> my, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> boom, I mean, <laughs> we're running out of time. Uh, mm. And I just want to ask this last, uh, or this question. I'm not mm. sure if it's the last one. But um, we've had all these conversations around transitioning. But... I want to use a catchphrase that is now everywhere, future proofing. Mm. So even in transitioning today, right, we're all talking about transitioning from a place of choice. Mm. But then if we take 10 years ago, mm. there are People jobs that existed that. that are pretty much redundant, redundant now. now. So it almost seems like transitioning is no longer a choice, but should be part of is, your career plan. Because yes. Yes. at some point, it might be you. Um, how would you, like, what should people be looking at? How would that process work if I was going to plan transitioning as part of your career? So if you were coaching me and you were like, actually, you know what? <laughs> this your career is, is good. Mm, mm. Okay. So for me, I always tell people, the average person will have eight careers in their lifetime. Mm. Ah. So that's the first thing. So whether you want or not, you're going to transition at least eight times. Some of us more than others, mm. okay? So it helps you to understand that from the get-go. The second thing is, I love the concept of future proofing, but it's very difficult to do because you don't know what you don't know. Mm. There were jobs that were future proof until COVID hit. Mm. Right. What did Mike Tyson say? Everyone's got a plan until someone punches you in the face. Mm. And life tends to do that. So for me, it's always a case of how do you diversify your skill set? Mm. How do you make sure that, okay, I might be like, I'm an accountant by training, worked in operations, worked in strategy, and now I'm in the human capital space. Mm. But it's always a case of mm, always wanting to know a little bit about everything and then seeing the trends. We're very fortunate in Africa that we get to observe the rest of the world before it hits us. Mm-hmm. So, and my, my team's always laughing because I'm looking at other coaches. I'm like, what's happening? What's happening? Okay, this is coming soon. It's like a trailer, <laughs> right? <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> so, so it's coming soon. Prepare, <laughs> prepare or die. <laughs> Oh wow! We have like five movie different movie titles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, She's coming back. Right? <laughs> oh, <she's laughs> <my God. laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That's so awesome. Is it for or die? You know, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I mean. <laughs> I don't even know where to start from. <laughs> just let the, let the laughter just uh, settle down and see if it. Oh but there's goodness. also a career in comedy yeah. too. Yeah. Let's think about it. <laughs> so we've counted over okay. how many careers so you can't be on You said eight, eight, so you're only like 50% of the way. So we're just, you know, just build them in. There's time. You know, so I, I was going to say that, again, um, the future of media is changing. So, I mean, the other day I was... My sister and I were looking at this new art, um, Ashake. Many years ago, if you wanted to like get your music heard, it's um, you go you go on um, probably a radio station. You beg them, please, can you play Carry my CDs? CDs all you all go along that. Mm-hmm. But you see, um, the social media space came and changed that entire monopoly. Mm-hmm. And now you can just literally sit down where you are. Release a video, and if people love it, you're a night, um, an overnight star, right? Things are really changing. You know, I don't know how much of the changes that are happening within the media space that we should be looking out for. I know you rightly said something. TikTok now has taken over all social media spaces. I mean, a lot of businesses, serious businesses that thought TikTok was a joke. Most of them are opening TikTok accounts, but they're seeing that that's where the future is going. So um, people that have created careers in, within the social media or maybe, let's say, um, creative space, right? What is the wisdom to approaching their career sustainability, mm-hmm. right? Because there was a time that it was you were a star when you were on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Now the stars are on TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. How should they be approaching it? Do you just keep on as the the apps are coming? You keep on following the app, or is there a better structure that can help to keep a balance with those kinds of careers? So I think it becomes important for you to realize that you do what you do. Mm-hmm. What these things are are platforms, and you have to adapt accordingly to that platform, okay. right? So it, on, I saw a fantastic study that was showing that a social media engagement is almost triple on TikTok. 
Hmm. So you have 17.6% guaranteed engagement on TikTok as opposed to Facebook, which has dropped. Yes. Right? So it's under 5%. And I think um, um, Instagram is sitting about 13%. So that's, that's a big differential. Gap, yes. Yeah. So for me, it's a case of how do I then take my content and then adapt it for this platform? How do I take th this content? So I'm looking at Instagram. I'm comfortable on Instagram. I do my lives. Great. TikTok for me, I'm like, how do I, how do I make my point in, in a minute? Mm -hmm. mm. And I've, I'm literally, I'm, I've gone to TikTok experts and I'm having this conversation because mm. I talk about careers and they were like, what you guys are saying, use your personality, you're funny, just do it. And I'm like, but it takes me a while to do that. So I've now got to tailor what I do for TikTok. Mm. YouTube, um, I remember when I did my, uh, my TED talk, everyone was like, it has to be 20 minutes. I did it in seven. Hmm. Because I'm realizing I'm not going to listen. Twenty mi are you, twenty minutes? Are you kidding it's me? It's too long. It, yeah. I could have had a sandwich, <laughs> had a cup of coffee. <laughs> so I, I, you know, you need to eat a slice of pizza. And it must be done. So you can do it shorter. Mm -hmm. Be an expert at what you do, but learn to tailor it for your audience. Absolutely. Otherwise, you will lose them. Absolutely. So if a well, quickly, if a last question Second. for those who do not know where they can find themselves in all of this space. Maybe they're the what do I call them? The oldies, mm. so to speak. But they still want to be relevant in today's world. Are these the only options or what else would you advise somebody or, um, as a means of approach towards becoming relevant even in today's world but finding what works with them or what's comfortable with them? So I think that if you have done things the way you've always done it, you have to realize so did Kodak and they not share anymore. My mm -hmm. darling, tell her again, Blackberry. Yeah. Blackberry <laughs> is gone. Nokia is gone. Yeah. So for me, it becomes a case of do a competitive analysis. What is everyone in your industry doing? Where are they? Jump on that bad bandwagon and learn mm -hmm. to master it. We're all uncomfortable. It's all very, very difficult for us. I didn't like talking live on Instagram. It was very, I'm like, I'm talking to a screen. No one's here. And I just got better and better and better. And I practiced until I got comfortable. Mm. You're, you're going to have to be uncomfortable because that is where growth happens. Mm. Right. Absolutely. What do you have a awesome. comment? Mm. Um, so we have a comment from Bobby Kennedy in um, Jalingo in Taraba. It says, career transitions. One of the principles of great men and women who become successful in their life, they never, never give up on their dreams. They look at themselves as real champions in the real life history so they can change people um, people mental thinking from negativity to positivity in their life in general thank you so much all right so if you had one final thing to say to anyone that is listening out there what would you say Vumi um, I would say you're, you are the CEO of your career you are, you are solely responsible for it and a lot of us are allowing our careers to happen to us mm. become a little bit more intentional plan your career at least for the next three to five years and remember, it is not just about the title. CEO is very, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> she has switched to South Africa in case you did not notice. <laughs> <laughs> but you really have to focus on the experience you want in your career. Life is very, very long. You spend most of it in, your, in building your career. Make sure it's an experience that enriches you and enriches others. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Vumi, are you wanted to clap? Let's talk. I, 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 I am, I am, I am. <laughs> we had fun. Fantastic. Well, I mean, Fantastic. we hope you come back again. I would we love you already. <laughs> <laughs> we love you already. Thank you so much. I think we had a fantastic conversation. What? Do we, I mean, these days our Fridays is back to. We are just giving you people back to back content. You should be sending offering. We'll send you a number. <laughs> you pay tight an offering for this information because I mean, thank you so much. I know this would help a lot of people that are out there listening and watching the show. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, Uti. Thank you, Noma. Now, before we go, and show you follow us on Instagram, TikTok. Yes, follow us there. <laughs> <laughs> the Twitter, all at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. And I think she stressed it in a bit when she was talking about it. It is never too late to be what you might have been. So do not leave to say, oh, no, no, it's too late. It's never too late. So today is the right time to start. Build that career and you'll be successful at it. We'll see you guys live on Monday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.